Hey everyone, David Reed of Meta Arcade, back with another episode of The Meta Report. Last time we introduced you to the Meta Arcade Adventures platform and announced that our first game would be the classic RPG Tunnels and Trolls. This time, I'll talk a bit about the rich history of Tunnels and Trolls, which is celebrating its 40th consecutive Gen Con this year. And, since Tunnels and Trolls is a role-playing game, I thought I'd do a little role-play myself this time. Onward then, to The Meta Report! Long ago, in the mid-1970s, a movement swept across the land of America and ultimately the entire world. From the roots of tabletop wargaming, a new game was born. Players created characters to serve as their alter egos, exploring strange, fantastical worlds. It was a game with no winners, no losers, and no ending. It was the world's first fantasy role-playing game, and it would change the lives of millions and the face of an industry. But. This is not a story about that other game. This is a story of the game that came next. Ken St. Andre was one of many who encountered that other game, and he was excited by its potential. Ken brought a unique perspective and believed the rules of this new game were unnecessarily complicated, making the game a bit too inaccessible. In a flash of inspiration, Ken set out to make his own game, he named it Tunnels and Trolls. Ken sought to reduce the complex mechanics and focus on role-playing and storytelling. For example, that other game used polyhedral dice of all kinds, dodecahedrons, icosahedrons, and more. Dice which were beautiful, but very hard to find in that era, as they were more the purview of mathematics professors teaching students about perfect solids than they were the trappings of gamers and hobbyists. So Ken designed Tunnels and Trolls to use only six-sided dice, as he knew most households had copies of Monopoly, Risk, and other popular board games where six-siders could be easily found. Combat in that other game was particularly complicated. First you roll for initiative, and don't forget your dexterity modifier and then check your weapon speed. When it's your turn to attack, roll your to hit roll based on your class and level, plus or minus your modifiers for strength and any magical bonuses or penalties. If you roll high enough against your enemy's armor class you hit, then roll your weapon damage, but don't forget to check if your opponent was a small, medium, or large sized creature. In Tunnels and Trolls, Ken decided combat rolls would be made simultaneously, and one roll by each side would determine the winner and how much damage the loser took. Combat in Tunnels and Trolls was fast, and served as a backdrop for role-playing instead of being the game's focus, as it often was in that other game. In June 1974, Ken printed 100 copies of his game and started selling them to his friends. Then in November, he met Rick Loomis, the founder of game company Flying Buffalo. Rick took Ken's remaining 60 copies to the Origins Game Convention and quickly sold them all. Rick returned to Ken with an offer for Flying Buffalo to publish and distribute Tunnels and Trolls. They sealed the deal with a handshake, and the second fantasy role-playing game was officially launched. The most intriguing innovation of Tunnels and Trolls came next, the solo adventure. In an era where hobby shops were few and far between, and no means of digital communication existed, gamers often struggled to find a group of players to enjoy that other game. But with solo adventures, Tunnels and Trolls pioneered a way to play a fantasy role-playing game on your own. Rick wrote the first solo adventure, Buffalo Castle, and Ken followed with the second, Death Trap Equalizer Dungeon. Over the years, more than 30 solo adventures spanning a wide range of scenarios for all types of characters were published. Today, they stand as a testament to raw primal fantasy from the dawn of role-playing games. In 2013, Ken and Rick reunited with members of the original Tunnels and Trolls team to create Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls. The project was successfully kickstarted with the TNT community and now stands as the finest edition of TNT ever made. And with that, I've got some very exciting news to share. We'll be giving our first hands-on preview of Tunnels and Trolls at Gen Con 2016. If you're attending Gen Con this year, stop by and visit us at the Flying Buffalo booth and be among the first to play iconic Tunnels and Trolls adventure, Naked Doom. And we even have a special gift. Everyone at Gen Con who demos the game and registers for early access will get a free printed copy of a brand new Tunnels and Trolls solo adventure, Grim Tina's Guard, featuring Grimtooth of Grimtooth's Traps fame and written by none other than the troll godfather himself, Ken St. Andre. It's all part of celebrating 40 consecutive years of Tunnels and Trolls at Gen Con. Hope to see you there, and stay in the know by following us at Meta Arcade on Facebook and Twitter, and see you next time on the Meta Report.